Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of Chernobyl. It's episode three of season one, Open Wide or Earth. Ugh, sounds, oh my God, it this the, the title, Open Wide or Earth, like, yeah, sure, the core is out there. Like, Open Wide Earth, I mean, your core is exposed. I think this is, the, the literal impact of this is going to be devastating, but oh, the, they, are, they are nailing it with the title name, so... Uh, I want to see what happens from episode two ending where those three men enter into the facility to empty the tanks and their lights go off. W what's happened now? God, it's like um, heart is racing and you're not even remotely or like, close to that. And, you know, just watching it's giving me anxiety. Imagine being in that situation. Um, but anyway, um, if you're new to the channel, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Please don't forget to subscribe. Blah, subscribe. <laughs> if you haven't, as you can see, I'm literally nervous. But um, part and parcel, I think, for watching such heavy, heavy impacted, essential uh, realities of what's happened in history. So, um, yeah, uh, let's dive right into this next episode and find out what happens in this one. Yeah. Like for the radiation impact to be that high and to affect like torch lights. Is it possible that the water has already killed them? Yes. Shit. Then what? If it doesn't work. They'll come out, won't they? Okay, that's valve one. Jeez, now it's almost like at stomach level. They're going deeper. Oh my god, never mind. Chest. Well, don't you want to clean them first? That's that's very good, but don't they have to like be washed down? Uh, I'm here to see my husband, Vasily Ignatenko. He's a firefighter from Chernobyl. I have permission. Chernobyl? I'm sorry, no visitors. But Major Major Borov told me. He said no exceptions. Please, I've come all the way from Kievsky Oblast. I have a pass. We can't be here. It's not safe. I am here to see my husband, Vasily Ignatenko. He's a firefighter from Chernobyl. I know who Ignatenko is, but you can't. I have permission. I, I've... You can see him for 30 minutes. Not a minute more. And you cannot touch him in any way. Do you understand? Yeah. Room 15. That's very sweet of her. You're not pregnant, are you? No. You're not, right? What did I tell you? No, don't touch him! Don't touch him! It's like butterfly effect. <laughs> she made this choice. Please don't kiss him. Your skin is exposed, my friend. Someone decided that the evacuation zone should be 30 kilometers when we know here cesium-137 in the gomel district that's 200 kilometers away it was decided based on what i don't know is this really the way it all works an uninformed arbitrary decision that will cost who knows how many lies made by some apparatchik some career party man <laughs> thank you i'm a career party man well not anymore if you just watch your tone comrade Legaza. listen the ego of men. Jeez, flipping Louise. There's also been reduction in iodine 131 and cesium 137 emissions. Good. Yes? But the temperature is rising. Yes, as predicted. And there. Uh... What? There's a spike in zirconium 95. What the fuck is that now? It's from the cladding on the fuel rods. Meaning what? 
The meltdown has begun. Great. So now we are on that time. The time has started. 48 to 72 hours. Just exposure. The concrete pad will last for six to eight weeks, but after that, the gas have estimates a 50% chance that the fuel will breach the pad and melt down into the groundwater itself. Jeez. Yeah. And where does this groundwater go? The Pripyat River, which feeds into the Dnieper. The primary water supply for approximately 50 million people, not to mention crops and livestock, would be unusable. That's just great. We're recommending we install a heat exchanger under the pad to lower the core temperature and halt the meltdown. And in order to do that, I'm told that we will need all of the liquid nitrogen in the Soviet Union. Oh, my God. Anything else? Uh, no, no, no. Thank you. Yes, I'd like to address the 30 kilometer exclusion zone. Wait, wait, who, Professor Legasov, is that you? Yes. Oh. Minor details, General Secretary. Um, Premier Rishkov has, has determined that. If he determined, then he determined. Look, Professor Legasov, you are there for one reason only, do you understand? To make this stop. I want to know when this will be over. If you mean when will Chernobyl be completely safe, the half-life of plutonium-239 is 24,000 years, so perhaps we should just say not within our lifetimes. Good. So he knows. We're taking a walk. In this lovely breathable air. Poor dog. What will happen to our boys? Which boys? The divers. The divers, the firefighters, the men in the control room. Oh, the level some of them were exposed. Ionizing radiation tears the cellular structure apart. The skin blisters, turns red and black. This is followed by a latency period. The immediate effects subside. The patient appears to be recovering. Healthy even, but they aren't. Continue. Yeah, he just needs to know everything. The bone marrow dies, the immune system fails. The organs and soft tissue begin to decompose. The arteries and veins spill open like sieves. To the point where you can't even administer morphine for the pain, which is unimaginable. So best just... Three days to three weeks, you're dead. That is what will happen to those boys. And the 50 million people. And what about us? If we don't evacuate properly, I mean. We've gotten a steady dose, but not as much of it. Not strong enough to kill the cells, but consistent enough to damage our DNA. So, in time, cancer. Shit. Or a plastic anemia. Either way, fatal. In a sense, it would seem we have got enough easy, though. I've seen them before. Yeah. Now you know why I wanted to take a walk. Why? You can presume the work site is bugged. Oh, been here the whole time. Of course, they've been here the whole time. But if we're seeing them out in the open now, it means they want us to know. It's because they want us to know. Wow. There's something I wanted to ask you, comrade, but I see you already asking yourself the same question. What is it? Why did it explode? Valid question. I've worked the numbers over and over, presuming the worst possible conditions in an RBMK reactor, and I always get the same answer. It's not possible. Not yet. Here we are. Everyone who was in the control room, Dyatlov, Akimov, Toptonov, they're all in Moscow. Hospital number six. We need to find out exactly what happened that night. Mm. Moment by moment. Decision by decision. Even those two that went to the to pump out the water. What's as big as a house? Barns 20 liters of fuel every hour. Puts out a shitload of smoke and noise and cuts an apple into three pieces. A Soviet machine made to cut apples into four pieces! <laughs> I need over 100 men to gather their equipment and get on the trucks. Do you? To where? That's classified. Basically, they're forcing you with all that. Come on, then. Start shooting. You haven't got enough bullets for all of us. 
Kill as many as you can. Whoever's left, they'll beat the living piss out of each of you. You can't talk to us like that. Shut the fuck up. We don't leave unless we know why. Respect. We're going to Chernobyl. We dig up coal, not bodies. The reactor fuel is going to sink into the ground and poison the water from Kiev to the Black Sea. All of it. Forever, they say. They want you to stop that from happening. How are we supposed to do that? Do you need to know, or have you heard enough? Melt through the ground, open wide or earth. <laughs> this title, man, gets me. Mm -hmm. So that's how many men you're asking? Now you look like the Minister of Coal. Mm. My darling, why are you touching him? Look at him. No, no, no. Please don't. I told you not touch him. Don't touch him. They touch you. It's safe for them, it's safe for me. Oh my god, darling. Look at his skin. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me what you see outside. See the red square, Kremlin, Spaskia Tower, Mausoleum. You see St. Basil's? Jeez, my dude. <laughs> Poor lady as well. I told you I'd show you Moscow, didn't I? Oh, dear. Who is this? I'm not a nurse, Comrade Dyatlov. I'm a nuclear physicist. Well then, comrade nuclear physicist, unless you happen to have a butter and caviar sandwich on you, you can get the fuck out of my room. Dyatlov! Oh my god! Oh, look at his leg! Oh my god! Look at him! Have you ever spent time with miners? No. My advice, tell the truth. <laughs> These men work in the dark. They see everything. Yeah, I know. They'll smell your bullshit. Was that you? Wow. Clean up good. These work? To an extent. Of course. I'll keep the back nice. So what's the job? We need to install a liquid nitrogen heat exchanger underneath this concrete pad. There's no way to approach from the interior of the building, so you have to get at it from underground. And what's above the pad? The core of the nuclear reactor, which is melting down. What, like? Literally. We're gonna need more men, 400 at least. We'll have to work around the clock. How deep do you want this tunnel, six meters? 12. 12? Why? For your protection. At that depth, you'll be shielded from much of the radiation. The entrance to the tunnel won't be 12 meters below ground. And we're not 12 meters below ground now. He smell. He's found out. <laughs> you have to really get through. No. Mm. We're not. Damn, he's smart. We can start in the morning. No. We start now. Wow. I don't want my men here one more second than they need to be. If these worked, you'd be wearing them. Mm-hmm. Damn, he's good. He's the most sensible man on this in this entire thing. Are they all like that? Straight to the point? Yep. Yeah. There's no way. Just looking at the density of the air. Oh my god. We need fans. For what purpose? What purpose? What do you mean for what purpose? They think you're fucking tunnel, that's why. Who's talking to you? Oh, comrades. It's 50 degrees in now. We can't breathe without masks. We can't breathe with the masks. It's like a fucking oven. We need ventilation. Fans will put dust in the air. The dust will go in your lungs. I've been breathing dust in my lungs for 20 years. I know. Not this dust. I'm sorry. For your own good. No fans. That's so sad. Oh my god, it's him! Le Leonov, Leonod? Leonid? My name is Olano Homyok. I'm a nuclear physicist with the Chinawa Commission. I want you to tell me everything that happened on the night of the accident. Is that all right? Yes. I want to tell. 
I'm called Michael. My name is Leon Fedorovich Toptunov. I am the senior reactor control chief engineer at Chernobyl nuclear power plant. Poor guy. Senior engineer. How old are you? I'm 25. No, 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 no. Oh my God, why, why, why? He's my husband. Not anymore. He's something else now. Do you understand? He's dangerous to you. He's burned. He's not just burned. Oh, oh. please. Poor lady. Oh, I can't even imagine. I don't want him to die, though. Stay on the other side of the plastic. I will have you removed by security. She's very kind, this nurse. child is doomed now because of this the miners are making incredible progress they say the whole job will be finished in four weeks what's what's up his mind four weeks can you believe that what is it it's the miners what oh my god they're literally going in naked oh they wouldn't give us fans it's too hot for clothes so we're digging the old way. This is where our father's mind. What is it? You're not as protected. No. Can you tell them to make a difference? <laughs> when this is over, will they be looked after? I don't know. <laughs> wow. You don't know. That's insane. Why didn't you initiate an emergency shutdown? Why didn't you press the AZ-5 button? I did. I reported the increase to Akimov, and he pressed the button. Leonid, that's, that's not possible. He did. I swear, I saw him do it. Someone's coming. And that's when it exploded. Pressing the AZ-5 button. What? Which room is Akimov? 27. Do you have any idea what you're dealing with? Of course I do. Please, I do. No. People are going to hear about this. Wait. What is everyone going to hear? This is so bad. So I'm just, I can't even speak. My name is Ulana. We know who you are. What is everyone going to hear? Well, they are like the spies. Komyuk was arrested last night. <gasps> what? I... Oh, no. Was it? Of course it was. Of course, yeah. There's no longer a threat of additional explosion. The Soviet people have faced the challenge and risen to the task and they and everyone in this room are to be commended deputy chairman shabina has given you the good news and it is i need a biscuit after all that <laughs> now i'm afraid a long war must begin good grief there is an enormous amount of radioactive debris and contamination spread out across a zone of approximately 2600 square kilometers this entire region must be completely evacuated. We must go to every town, every village to ensure this. All animals still surviving within the zone, whether domesticated or wild, must be presumed contaminated and will have to be destroyed 
prevent the spread of radiation and disease. We will need to construct a containment structure around the power plant itself, which will, of course, still be extremely... There will be deaths. Yeah, essentially. What amount of time and how many men do you require? We expect this liquidation effort to take three years and approximately 750,000 men. Flipping hell! Three years, 750,000 men. We just didn't... Begin at once. Uh huh. look at that. Just now we were talking about three deaths and now tens of thousands of deaths. My associate was, was arrested last night. Oh? I mean no disrespect, but I was wondering if you could tell me why. I'm sorry, I don't know who you're talking about. Mm. She was arrested by the KGB. You are the first deputy chairman of the KGB. I am. That's why I don't have to bother with arresting people anymore. But you are bothering with having us followed. You really don't trust us. Of course I do. But you know the old Russian proverb? Trust but verify. And the Americans think that Ronald Reagan thought that up. Hmm. Can you imagine? Mm -hmm. I need her. Then it's done. Her name? I know who she is. Good day, Professor. That went surprisingly well. Great. Came off like a naive idiot. Naive idiots are not a threat. I really wanted to laugh at that joke, but I think the circumstance is not the best. <laughs> I just laughed. Do you think the fuel will actually melt through the concrete pan? I don't know. 40% chance, maybe. I'd say to 50. By the way, the numbers mean the same thing, maybe. Mm. The problem has been assigned and you will stop at nothing until you find an answer. Because that is who you are. A lunatic, then. A scientist. Did you know that they were running a safety test? Yeah. There's something else. They shut the reactor down and Dr. Nov confirms it. They pressed these at five. Apparently not soon enough. No, they pressed it before. They say that Kimov pressed AZ-5 and then the reactor exploded. If it had been just one of them, I would have put it down to faulty memory or delusion even, but... Both? They both agreed. They were adamant. What does that mean? They think it's possible. I think it makes no sense. I, I think it's what I would say if I was trying to cover my own mistakes. Oh, but what's there to lose? They're almost dead. I believe. We have to pursue every possibility. I'll go back to the hospital and re-interview Akimov and Tatanov. What if they're dead by then? They're not. <gasps> they died? This is the... This is for the uh, lining, right? Like, to create the barrier. literally like nailing it so that it doesn't get exposed back out so sealing it shut oh my god putting cement horrifying to watch gosh man can't even I think I think I'm done for the day. I, I I know there are only like two more episodes left, but I don't yeah, yeah, I need a break from that. That is it is hard to that just that last scene made it worse and the effect like they looked fine at the start of the episode. And of course she's pregnant, of course. And 
the 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 fact of the matter is when they said that it, you it looks like you will be fine like but in two three days it gets worse like like you're literally that's their their immune system shutting down their own organs are decomposing from inside and they are it's a pain unimaginable because even morphine won't do it because it's literally inside their body it's happening you can't stop it oh my my god that that entire look like the the way they turned it it's jeez Ooh. um unimaginable but yeah, I think I'm done for today. It's it's crazy. But I want to know more about the fact that um, they pressed the AZ5 button and then that's what caused the reactor to explode. If I, if anything, they said that the AZ5 will, why didn't you press it sooner to stop from anything happening? But then that's what caused it. And now that those two engineers are dead, um, they can't, I don't know how uh, she's gonna, you know, uh, pursue it, like pursue this, this story, this lead. <sighs> Jeez. Yeah, anyway. Um, thank you so much guys for joining. Um, three eye-opening, uh, three eye-opening like episodes. Can't imagine what the last two will be like. But um, I'll see you guys in the next one. Until then, if you're new to the channel, thank you so much for joining. Please don't forget to subscribe if you haven't. And let me know down in the comments what I should watch next. I'll see you in episode four. Uh, need a tad bit break from that. But um, I'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys. <laughs>